Okay, Dr. Elders, again, conservatives and religious groups challenged you on issues as Surgeon General. Yes. What issues disturbed them the most? I thought that the issues, it, it made no sense, but the issues related to comprehensive health education, including sex education in schools. I thought everybody would agree with that. I can imagine people not agreeing with that, but that was a really very big issue. The issue of teaching young people about the importance of, you know, if they choose to be sexually active, to make sure they used a condom. You know, to me, that made good sense in the area, age of, area of AIDS. And, well, they thought, well, that's giving them permission to go have sex. Well, for as I'm concerned, when you've got the highest teenage pregnancy rate in the industrialized world, nobody needs to give them a permission. <laughs> They're already doing it. That's right. And so, I, I, but that those two issues seem to be the thing that really upset them absolutely the most. And what about your position on masturbation? Well, Wasn't that, the, oh, oh, that feed the that, fire? Oh, that just really fed the fire. And, and I guess maybe that was the church, you know, all the, the sin, you know, it was all this great sin. Well, people, you know, it had been shown that, you know, the, you know, first of all, there's no place in the Bible that mentions masturbation, number one. And I always tell people, you know, and I was asked a question about it in regard to AIDS uh, and how it would, if it would reduce the transmission of AIDS and primarily, you know, in Africa and some other countries. And I, you know, reminded them, you know, that first of all, masturbation never made anybody go crazy. <laughs> it made, they, hair won't grow on your hands. It's never given anybody a disease. Never gotten anybody pregnant, and you know you're having sex with somebody you love. <laughs> so, but you know, but they just felt well. I was wanting to teach children how to masturbate. Well, I said nobody needs to teach anybody how to masturbate. God taught you how to masturbate. Well, think about it: eighty percent of women masturbate, ninety-five percent of men masturbate, and the rest lie. So, <laughs> you, so he didn't have to. <laughs> but but they just really got really bent out of shape about that. In, in the schools that adopted your suggestions, yes, did you see a clear reduction of uh, any sexual diseases or e including AIDS or uh, teenage pregnancies or whatever? I mean, did, did you have solid figures to look yes. at to support your position? We had solid figures to look at. You know, our largest school was Central High School. Oh, you know, where we had every, you know, we offered contraceptives and every, everything. And we went from over 40 pregnancies per year down to three. Oh. And that stayed until uh, about three or four years ago, you know, when the school-based clinic was closed. They said they couldn't afford it and all this. Well, now they're back up to 46 pregnancies oh. in the school this past year. And... One low birth weight baby will cost more than ten school based clinics. And low birth rate because of the age of the mother? Well, because of, well, there, one low birth weight baby born to a teenage mother. Low birth weight may be born to any mother, but they're far more likely to be, the incidence is higher among teenagers than older women. And first of all, they don't they won't get prenatal care. Secondly, they um true. They, they you know, and they feel that they aren't pregnant until the doctor says I'm pregnant and as long as you don't go to the doctor and the doctor didn't say you were pregnant, you're not pregnant. And what is so, the oh I'm sorry, go ahead, Doctor Wolf. No, and I would just, and I just think that if we could reduce if we could get more teenagers even into early prenatal care, we would reduce the incidence of low birth weight babies. And what is the youngest mother you've seen? The youngest mother that I personally have seen and taken care of was eight years old. And she had Whoa. twins. Twins at eight years old. The youngest father? Well, I'm not sure about uh, the, the youngest father because we didn't track the fathers nearly as carefully as we did the mothers. Mothers, yes. Okay.